Is your mini windscreen fogging up? We have the solution for you. There you are now, welcome back to another how-to video. On this episode, we're gonna take a look at fitting a heated windscreen. While minis have a heater matrix, it is a design from the 50s, so giving it a little help and hand with an electronic heated windscreen will make your life much nicer for motoring in the winter. It's a reasonably straightforward process, a couple of steps that have to be uh, done correctly in order to get a really good result. So let's jump into it and I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, first job is to remove these uh, wiper arms. Uh, sometimes you need to use a little screwdriver, uh, something like a flat blade screwdriver, just to release the catches, but a lot of minis to wear in these are so much that it's just easy to pop them off on this one, definitely. Next job is to take out this fillet strip. So all I use to do this is a sort of bluntened uh, screwdriver. You don't want the screwdriver to be a really sharp one uh, because you could puncture the seal or you could damage the seal. So yeah, I normally just use a blunt screwdriver and just get in underneath the fillet strip and pull it out. Once you get one side of the fillet strip out, then no need for the screwdriver anymore. You're just gonna pull the fillet strip out. Now it's cold in the garage today, so this fillet strip is brittle. So you gotta be careful that you don't break the fillet strip when you're pulling it out. Given that this is a mini garage, I have spares of these to put back in again if I do break it, so I can be a little bit brutal with it. But if you're doing this yourself and you haven't ordered one of these spare, then you've got to be careful with it. So we'll save that for later. Next job is to get the windscreen out. Now, the best way to get the windscreen out is uh, to push it from the corners. Okay, like I said, it is kind of cold in the workshop today. So these window rubbers are going to be a little bit unforgiving. So you gotta get in there, give it a bit of force and get the window out. Now it's a good idea to have somewhere set up to put the glass after you get it out. Uh, I'm gonna have, I have a nice soft cloth on the roof here, which is where I'm gonna put this windscreen now as it pops out. See, nice and easy. And put it up on that soft cloth. We'll wrap that later on and put it in a box for the customer. He'll be happy out. Now we want to inspect the seal. I always recommend taking this seal off the body before you put a new windscreen in it. For no other reason than you're gonna just check to make sure you've no corrosion in the bodywork. This car has only been recently restored, but I want to just check it anyway to make sure it's right. So with the seal out, we're looking at the metalwork here, and we're just checking to make sure that we have no signs of rust or corrosion which this one is perfectly nice and clean. No problems. Okay, so we can pop the seal back in. Okay, so one of the really important things is where you place the, the join in the seal. So you can see this is the join in the seal. It should always be center bottom of the car. I see it sometimes in cars up here where they put the center join in the seal up here. This is a really bad place to put that join because if water runs off the roof rail, it'll run into that join in the seal and then run around. Now this is what they call a vulcanized seal. So it is actually sort of glued together. It's vulcanized here to join the seal together. But that can crack over time. So don't take any chances by putting it up there. Leave it down the bottom. That way any water comes in, it's gonna run out of the seal and run away rather than run into the frame of the car and potentially rust it. Okay, next thing to do is to prep the window and put it in. Okay, next job is to take the windscreen out of its packaging and then set up the 
fame. I have this nice little stand here, but anything like a Black & Decker Workmate or even a chair with some nice soft cushioning on it will allow you to prep up the windscreen and get it ready for putting in the car. Obviously just very careful, uh, you don't want to scratch the windscreen with the blade when you're opening the tape. I always cut on the blue plastic rather than on the windscreen side. Okay, so when you take your windscreen out of the packaging, it will have two wires attached to it with this sort of uh, conductive electrical tape. One this side and one this side. There is no positive or negative. So there isn't one side is positive and one side is negative. One side does need to go to earth and one needs to go to a switched live feed. And that basically is one that when you put the key into the ignition position and then you flick your switch, will put live to the windscreen. The other side just needs to go to earth. You decide which side you want to earth and which side you want to put the live to. For me, I always earth the passenger side and make my switched connection on the driver's side. Simple reason for that, all of the electrics, the fuse board and the hand controls are obviously on the driver's side. So it makes it easier for running wiring to put your switch on the driver's side. And earthing it is just simply finding a body art in the back of the dash, putting the terminal on the end and earthing it to it. I'll show you that in a while when we get the windscreen in. Next piece of prep we need to do is we need to add some lubricant to the seal so that we can easily get the windscreen into place. All I have mixed up in here is just some uh, fairy liquid and water. Uh, any kind of dish soap and water is the best lubricant. I've seen people over the years use things like um, silicon spray, WD-40, all that them kind of lubricants. Uh, silicon spray, those kind of thing. Um, personally speaking, I prefer just to use the dish soap and water. Another thing that works quite well is windscreen cleaner. It has a bit of alcohol in it, so it tends to um, evaporate off quite quickly, whereas this uh, dish soap will stay on here pretty much for the whole of the time I'm putting this windscreen in, uh, which makes it much easier uh, to uh, do the job. You're not having to constantly reapply. If you use something like WD-40 or, uh, as I said, windscreen cleaner, uh, you'll have to constantly keep reapplying it and that will uh, grow tiresome quickly. So, that's good. There is a top and bottom to a mini windscreen. It's wider on the bottom, narrower on the top, so you wanna make sure. When it's an electric heated windscreen, that's really easy because you can see the connections are taped on the bottom of the screen. So where the connections go in, go on the bottom of the screen. Um, you can leave this tape on. Some people are nervous about damaging the connections when they're putting them into the rubber and they leave this tape on to protect it. If it's your first time putting the windscreen in, I would recommend you do leave that tape on. You can get it off afterwards. It is a bit of a faff, but it does protect the connection while you're putting it in. For me, I've put in enough of these windscreens now. I know how to be careful down here and I won't damage it. So I'm gonna take the tape off now just to make my life a bit easier. I do, however, leave this uh, tape on until I have the windscreen pretty much in place. Okay, so how do you put the windscreen in? Exactly the reverse of taking it out. Put it in to the bottom of the seal. This is gentle and patience always work well here. So you want to get the windscreen to sit down into the seal like that. That's what we're going for.
Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm just working the seal up onto the edge of the screen. I've seen people poking in here with sharp screwdrivers. Try and avoid that until the very end if you possibly can because the screwdrivers uh, can badly damage the seal, the windscreen seal. You do need to use some sort of an implement at the very end of fitting the windscreen. Some people I've seen using the method for string. I have absolutely never got on with the string method. It works really well for the rear windows, but I've never had any success getting a front window in with that method. Um, so um, for me, yeah, I like to use a blunt uh, flat blade screwdriver as the way of just working the seal in. So pushing that window over into that seal. Removing that contact tape that they have on here. Let that wire sit down against the dash. So just working that seal, getting that window into the seal. Okay, so I like to use these to get the seal up over the glass, the last part of getting the seal up over the glass. It's just a simple tire lever that you would see uh, used for putting the tire on a push bike wheel. They're perfect for the job. I have a couple of different ones depending on the windscreen. They have a nice little uh, lip on them that helps catch the seal, pull it up over the window. Obviously critically important is the lubrication in this situation, so having that uh, dish slope in there allows this to slide on the rubber nice and easily. So it's just a simple matter of hooking it under the rubber and running the rubber up over the glass. So you rub it up over the glass, move to the far side now and pick that side up. It's always at this point, uh, when you're getting the last little bit in, that it's tough because you're trying to get the seal to sit down into place. So uh, this takes that extra bit of patience just to get it where you want it. I always just help the seal up with my fingers from the inside. Don't worry if all the seal doesn't go up the first time, that's okay. You can come back and work the next piece up. Just keep getting that in underneath there. And you can see it's picking the seal up there now nicely. Push the glass in a little bit. And there we go. The window is sealed in. And a little push. Yeah. Okay, last thing now is we have to put the fillet strip back in again and that'll hold the window in place. Okay, next job is to put the fillet strip back in. Now, as I said, it's cold down in the workshop and the fillet strip is quite cold, so I'm gonna be ginger carefully putting the windscreen fillet strip back in. Again, start off with some lubrication in the fillet strip. So as I said, again, it's just soap and water. It's just soap and water. We get that into the fillet strip opening. Don't worry about getting it on the windscreen or anything like that. That's not a problem. We can clean that all off afterwards. Most important is that uh, you have the lubrication in there so that the tool moves easily through the fillet strip. If you don't, it'll bind up on the rubber and you'll find yourself in a whole world of hurt. So, just get that in there. Okay. So how this fillet strip works is you want to find the middle of your windscreen. So we know there's the uh, mirror and the mirror is always in the middle of a mini. So you open the fillet opening and you start your strip at the mirror opening. Then what I always find is just to lift the strip at about 45 degrees as you pull the fillet tool towards yourself. And then once you get a bit of the strip in, it'll be anchored in its original point, and then you can just work it in with the tool. 
You can see how the lubrication really, really helps with keeping the tool in place and helping it glide along through as the fillet strip goes into place. Like I said, this it's cold in the garage now. We're in the middle of January, so the fillet strip is quite uh, brittle. So you gotta be careful with it. The corners are always the worst part, so just take your time on the corners and get that strip in there. And then, as you're moving along, you can see the straight pieces are much easier. What that strip is doing is expanding the seal to tightly hold the window in. Now I'm gonna move around, because I also like working towards myself. So keep working away. Keep moving the strip. Stand up there. Working away. Make sure that the strip doesn't rotate. As I said, at the corners, just, again, taking your time. If the tool pops out, that's not a problem at all. You just go back a small bit and re-seat uh, it in the fillet strip and work your way. You can see I'm kind of doing a walking action here, um, kind of twisting it like a screwdriver. That's a good way of getting progress in these tight areas. And when you get to the straighter sections, you can just kind of Walk it along, and it moves the strip in. Now, So, we're at the stage now where we have the fillet strip just about to go in. One of the things I find to do just to seat the fillet strip and make sure it goes in all the way is just with a dead blow, just give the strip a couple of taps and it'll just walk the strip. It's bringing it, moving it all the way around inside the window frame and it's tightening it up. We're gonna do the same for the other side. So just pop that other side back out again. And that's it, that's our fillet strip in place. Don't worry about the fillet strip being tight here. It's actually a good thing to have the fillet strip tight there because the glass will relax, the rubber will relax when it gets warm and all of that will stretch out. So you're far better off to have a bit of tension here in the fillet strip rather than it being a little bit too short. So you see me just tap it in there with the dead blow at the end, totally fine. That's just gonna put a bit of tension into the strip and get a really good seal around the sides. You can also, if you have a problem, you can use your dead blow to make sure your seal is sitting into the corners all the way around. Something that you have to do on new seals especially. This seal was already in here, so it already has the shape in it. But sometimes when the window gets tight, it doesn't sit all the way into that groove and you can just use your dead blow to slide along and give it a bit of a, a pop in. 
obviously don't use anything other than a dead blow because any kind of metal you'll damage your windscreen and you'll put scratches in it and cracks in it so perfectly fine with the dead blow i have mine taped up with lots of nice tape to even act as a bit more of protection that's it okay next step is to have a look at the wiring so we're inside the car now and we're going to make our air connection so you remember i said to you earlier on that either side of the screen can be earth but i like to make uh, it the passenger side earth because it makes wiring a little bit easier for the driver's side so all i'm going to do is put a good quality crimp connection on here they're a, a much better job than the likes of the blue red yellow uh, cheaper crimp connections you can get these at anywhere that supplies durite electrical connections or anything like that they're much neater i then just finish it with a little piece of heat shrink and uh, try not to set the car on fire just a, a soft flame on the torch then and shrink them down and it just gives you a really professional finish on your connection these also have a sort of a glue inside them as well that when you heat it the glue uh, sets up as well to really make fast that connection now where are we going to air it we're just going to get a body air up here on the side of the car so we're just going to drill a small pilot hole there first uh, to um, make our connection then we will um, put a a self-tapping screw clean off the paint put a self-tapping screw there and that will give us a good earth for the windscreen there's our pilot hole so once we have our pilot hole we need to scratch off a little bit of the paint just so that we know we get a good uh, decent earth so just with a little sharp screwdriver just scrape around where the connection is going to go and get yourself a good earth a good earth then a nice self tap and screw through the connection Okay, and the final thing then is I always use a bit of rust guard because we have exposed some bare steel and that's an important uh, connection. This Q30 protective film is the business. Spray it on the inside, spray it on the outside and it'll give it a complete rust guard. It's peel off so if in, at a later stage you want to take this off, repaint it, do anything like that, you can peel the film off and it'll leave it completely as if you never went near it. Spray it on the outside and the inner wing and that'll prevent any rust from getting in to the car. So the customer gave us a template of an auxiliary switch panel they want us to make for the car. One of these is to have the electric fan switch and the other is to have the heated windscreen on it. So we're gonna use this to make a template for the car. Now, I've tried it in the car and it actually is a really good template. It just needs a couple of small modifications. I have to add a bit of material to the back of it and just change one or two of the angles, but otherwise it's actually pretty good. So we're gonna start off on the shears here uh, to get uh, a piece of aluminium the right size uh, and then when we shear that off we'll mark out where we want our bend we can shear that then drill the holes and mount it into the dash okay so we've drawn a line we're going to bring it in here to the shears i've removed the shear guard here just so you guys can see you really shouldn't operate a shears with that removed but um, at least it'll give you guys the footage of what's happening. So we just shear off the aluminium sheet. That's the piece we want. So that gives us the width of our uh, switch plate. And the next thing then we have to decide about is the length of our switch plate. So uh, the customer's template is pretty good. We can use that to get an idea. There. So same again, 
use our square. Mark our line. As any engin good engineer will say, measure twice, cut once. So we'll just check the measurement again. Yep, happy with that. And share that piece off. Okay, aluminium when you buy it brand new like this has two finishes. It has the back here and then it has this uh, front cover with a sort of a plastic on it. We take this off at the very end because it keeps the finish of the aluminium good. It's something though that we have to think about when we're putting the bend on this because we don't want that bend to end up leaving the good side in. We want the good side out. So our finished panel is going to have that finished piece on the outside. So in this orientation here. So we want the bend to happen from this side. So we do our mark on this side of the aluminium. Now the customer has given us an indication of how big he wants the face of the switch panel to be. So we can work with that measurement. Use our tri square again. Straight edge across the so that's our bend line. This little three in one metal working machine is probably one of the best investments I ever got for this garage because it gives me the ability to make these little plates and panels in a flash. Now, one thing I'm gonna do just before I do this is I'm gonna just trim the edges uh, because uh, we don't want any sharp edges on this panel after it gets done. So we'll just nip the edges to make sure we get a nice round finish. You can do it after you bend it, but it's a bit more work, so. Let's just nip the edges now and we can file them into square afterwards. Yes, yeah, so we just take the edges off. The back half doesn't matter because it's going to be screwed up to the panel afterwards anyway. So now we want to put the bend in our, our panel. So the way this metal worker works is you just bring the handle down and it bends on the upfold. So we're just lining up the V-groove with that. Lining up with our plate, making sure our plate is square and then put in our bend and that gives us that really nice night clean 90 degree bend in our aluminium which gives us our switch plate surface matching what the customer wanted we'll drill two holes in this now for to put the switches in it and then we can get that mounted into the car and then we can wire up the switch cool okay so all i'm doing here is just bringing that uh the corners of that aluminium into round. This is something that you'd probably want to mark up carefully with you know, the radius of a socket or something like that. I've made enough of these plates now at this stage that um, this is something I can achieve by eye. But as I said, uh, if it's your first time making something like this, probably just spending a little bit of time uh, giving yourself some guidelines to follow. Uh, we'll bring it into round. It's always a good idea just to break those sheared edges as well. The sheared edges can be really quite sharp, even on aluminium. So we just break those to save anybody's fingers getting cut. Okay, uh, I've marked up the plate as well for three switch positions. Uh, I'm gonna leave one switch position here for the customer in case they want to add another switch later on for whatever it might be, a fuel pump or uh, some other kind of electrical item. So we'll have the two switches here for them so they know what they're doing. So we'll just start by drilling two pilot holes. And then we'll use a step drill to bring it out to the right size for the switch. So check to see 
which step drill is the right one. So it's the fourth one up. One, two, three, four. And like before, just mark it with the blue so I know how far to go. drill is it countersinks the hole as well after it drills it with the next size up step so you end up with a nice finish the only thing is they tend to burst out a little bit in aluminium so it's a good idea just to come in from the back side as well and just step it out just knock the burr off then with a nice sharp file And that then will leave it ready for the switch to be fitted. Switch fits in at the back nicely and the nut can run down at the front. You'll notice I'm leaving the protective film on. I leave that on till the very last minute when the switch is fitted in place to give the thing as much protection as I can. All right, we go fit it to the car now. So just off camera, we did a bit of preliminary wiring on the switch, so we made our lives and we made an earth. Why an earth? Because these are LED light up switches, so they need an earth. We drilled three mounting holes as well. If you're wondering how I decided what cable to use, I just copied what the manufacturer for the windscreen used, which was a 28 strand cable. So I've just made my lives with 28 strand cable as well. Okay, so all that's left now, we have the switch panel in place, the switches are working. We have our live feed that goes to our fuse board and we have our wire. So we need to run this down behind the dash the same way as we did the other side and terminate it on the back of one of these switches. And then run in our live to our fuse box and our windscreen will be installed. Okay, that's a hole through there for the wire to follow through. And it's just a matter of me being able to see it now. <laughs> Get my little torch out. And feed the wire through the little hole. Just before we put it down into the back, we'll just check it for length to make sure we might have to add a little piece to it. Yeah, it's a little bit tight, so we're going to add a small extension piece to that. And then we'll put a crimp on it and connect it in. Okay, so you can see here we have came out from the bulkhead. I've just put some uh, nice insulation on the brown wire. It's come up across the back of the alarm horn here and it's coming out nicely exactly where this white terminal is. So we're just going to clip off the end of this white terminal and feed the two of these into a new eyelet with a new boot on it and a little bit of shrink wrap. And then that's our last connection made and our heated windscreen should work. Just crimp on our connection. 
Okay, last job now is just to shrink down the shrink wrap around the connection. Just feather the flame over it. And then we'll make that connection on the fuse board. While the heat shrink is soft, you can get a good placement for the wire. That's a connection on the fuse board properly made. Put our fuse cap back on. No, that's the wire over here, Paul. And that's it. Heated windscreen installed in the car. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for another how-to in the workshop. Any questions that you want clarified regarding this, stick them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them and help anybody out who's trying to do this project themselves at home. Other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll get notifications of our latest videos as they pop out. Other than that, thank you so much for coming along and I'll see you on the next one.